So it's the 1st of March and you may be wondering, what are you going to sow to put in your gardens? And summer seems so far away right now when it's actually throwing it down yet again. And I could actually provide a home for ducks in my garden right now rather than plants. That won't last long though because I've got a really free draining garden which is really good. But I've also got semi-raised beds. The one thing that I don't have is a greenhouse or a polytunnel. So when it comes to warm weather plants, what do I need to do if I want to grow them outside? Well, I need to start them early indoors and there are all kinds of tips and tricks for you to be able to do that. But what if you're on a budget? And what if you can't afford to be running electric to run heat mats and propagators and all of the other tips and tricks that are out there for getting them started early? Well, stick with me because I'm about to show you a tip for getting your peppers and other seeds to germinate really quickly without any of that. And so we're all aware that when we leave our potatoes in the cupboard, they sprout. And that if we want to plant them in the garden, we do this thing called chitting. And there it is doing its own little thing nicely. So here's the thing about that. There are some seeds that take absolutely four ever to germinate. And one of the reasons for that can be that they need a specific temperature to do it. And our warm weather seeds are those particular seeds. Peppers in particular do take an awful long time to germinate, two to three, sometimes four weeks if the temperature isn't right, most especially if it's fluctuating. Now there's this thing about temperatures where a lot of people think that if it's warm in the day then they're going to germinate but it's actually the nighttime temperatures that can count a lot more because when they're fluctuating, that's what's going to stunt these little seeds from germinating. Another one that's an absolute nightmare is parsnips. If I can get these, there you go. Now, this is one of the reasons that I love DT Brown because when you order from them, and I'm in no way affiliated with them, they do send free seed out. And one of the great things about free parsnip seeds is that one of the reasons that parsnips may fail to germinate is because it's old seed. And there's absolutely nothing worse than waiting around for seed that doesn't germinate and then it's too late in the season to start more, especially when it comes to your warm weather plants because a lot of them can have a really late day maturity. And the thing about maturity is that with such as tomatoes, they ripen from the inside out. And so the date to maturity is how long it takes for them to produce the seed, not how long it produces to ripeness. And so that fruit is mature even when it's green because the seed is mature on the inside. And it can take just as long to get to ripeness as it did for it to become mature on the plant. So if we've waited around all that time, we might have missed our window. So here's a tip to know whether our seeds germinate. We're gonna start them in here instead. And so all I've got is a bit of recycling and we all love that, don't we? A takeaway tub. Now I'm starting a lot of seeds in here and so we're using a big space. We've got some kitchen roll and this is damp. Now the trick to this is to use both sides because we're gonna cover our seeds. And all you want to do is put enough water in here and then tip it out so that there are no drips. Okay, it's a bit like when you make meringue and stick it over your head to see if it's going to fall out. Open our seed and shake it in. Now the thing with parsnips being a root is that you need to keep an eye on these because as soon as these start to germinate, you want your bread prepared outside ready for them to go. So there we go. You can just flick them about to make sure that they're evenly spaced and then cover it and put your lid on. 
and that is going to act like your little propagator and that is all you need to do. Now these will take just a few days to start germinating. You want to keep checking on them because that taproot is going to grow very quickly. It won't matter too much if you don't get it straight away because all you're going to do is in the ground it's going to start sneaking out and if and if it does come out and it's quite long and you miss that first little nub you can just make a hole and stick it in. Trust me, I've done it. It works just fine. Now, here, what you'll notice is that I have a tray all ready to go. I've got all my labels because here I've got all my pots of peppers. I've got two more ready to go to show you. But this tray, it's a Charles Dowding CD60. I love these. I've been using them for a few years now. And I have a number of reasons for why I love them. And I'm in no way affiliated. I like the company because it's local. Good Yorkshire company. But I like the holes in these because they're large holes, which means that if you water from the bottom, it can absorb enough water. It's also rigid. It's a good thick plastic. It's gonna last you a long time. They're reasonably priced. But for me, it means I can pick it up. And then when I want to get my plants out, if they're a little stuck, I can get my finger in through the bottom. So for somebody that's like me with damaged hands, they're so easy to use. Now, these come in a 30 and I've got a 15 ready to go for my beetroot. I've tried growing all different kinds of jalapeno and like I said I have to be very selective about the varieties of peppers that I choose to grow in my garden because they need to be able to grow outdoors and so having grown quite a huge amount of varieties of jalapeno with varied success what I did find was this one from Real Seeds called Nigel's Outdoors and this really does ripen to red as you will see in the photos I'm going to insert. And so here you can see the seeds, nice big seeds. Again I'm in no way affiliated to real seeds but I do like their seed a lot. These are heirloom seed so if you grow only these you will be able to save the seed from them and real seeds do highly recommend that you save seed from their product and so again uh, this look has just got a spot of water in the bottom so all I'm going to do is tip that out because we don't want them sat in water place them in there Cover them. I've got my tag for my pepper. It won't focus in because my hand's not there. Tag for my pepper. Oh, the lid doesn't want to sit properly on that one. That one, I'll have to go and look for the lid that actually sits properly on there. Otherwise, I'll just have to keep an eye on it so it doesn't dry out. Sit that over there. And then this one will be my shishitos. And I grow more of these than I do anything else because they're a fantastic pickling pepper. And so I'll show you some footage of those. I'll do those off camera. Now, what I wanted to show you is, I did these last week. Because I was hoping to get this filmed early for you, but I've been having some work done here. And so, Poor workmen are having to make a horrendous noise. But these have already sprouted and so these give me the perfect opportunity to be able to show you that these have gone just a little bit too far but it's perfectly okay. So as you can see they're already sprouting. This white fuzzy bit here is the root and you can see that they've already sent the first leaves out. Now sometimes depending on how the seed is laid 
it will send out the root into the tissue paper. If that happens, don't worry about it. Just very gently cut around it and stick the whole thing into the compost. The root will grow through that with no problem whatsoever. I've already made the holes in here. This variety is Sugar Rush Peach Stripey. And I saw the Sugar Rush, um, do you know, I can't remember which one it is. I think it's just Sugar Rush Peach being grown by the lovely Heather at Sage and Stone. So go check her out because she's got a lovely channel, especially if you like goats. And um, I couldn't get hold of the one that she had specifically, but then I found this and it's a beautiful pepper. So you can see there that that's the seed. And these pincers that I've got, what you get for um, doing terrariums and stuff. So now all I'm going to do is I've already got a hole in there and I can just pop that in there and that will write itself and now I know that that has already sprouted. Now let's see if I can get this one off of here without damaging it. Okay so I've taken that out hopefully I'll focus in. There you go. So you can see some paper is attached to it. That will not matter at all because the tissue is damp. It will rot down. You can see the leaves and the roots sticking out from the bottom. I've made a hole into the compost with my tweezers. And so I'm just going to stick that in there. Gently use my tweezers to just push it in. And that will write itself. But it is better to try and catch them when they haven't pushed that leaf out. I just did, I haven't checked them. So please don't do like me. You know, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> but I hadn't realized that these had come on quite so quickly and germinated this quick. That casing is still on. Let me put those down. So this one, that casing is still on. Now if we put that above the soil, it'll dry out and the leaves won't be able to get out of there. So we're actually going to put this below the soil so that it stays damp and then they can get out. Just bend that down in there, being careful. Don't press it down too hard because otherwise, because the plant is like this at the moment. And so we need those leaves to unfurl out of that casing. Now, this method you can do with sweet peas, which is how I started doing it because I had so much trouble with sweet peas, even when I soaked them. And I also tried doing them. I have another video that I'll post at the end of here for how I actually do my normal garden peas and monch too, sugar snap and all that. I used to try doing my sweet peas that way. I couldn't get them to germinate that way. I tried doing them on a plate, which you can do with cling wrap over the top. I couldn't get them to germinate that way either. This is literally the only way. A gentleman uh, in a groom said to me, put the paper over the top. And so I was like, okay, I'll give that a try. And um, it worked straight away. And so then I started doing it for everything else, including my cucumbers and melons. And so now I do this for all of my warm weather seeds that I know are gonna be tricky. Not, some, not tomatoes, because I just did a germination test. So that's these. You'll see those in a previous video for the compost. That'll be down in the description. They are for the mini Mazzano seed that I collected from Brad Gates. And you know, tomatoes are really easy to get to germinate for the most part. But for peppers, they can be so finicky and fickle. But this way, you'll know that they've actually germinated. And so hopefully, if everything else is okay, then they'll get on and they'll get done. So I hope you find that useful. I hope you'll give it a try. And if you do, let me know down in the comments. Uh, oh, and also I do my squash like this as well because uh, I was told to try direct sowing my squash because I was having some issues with those because um, they don't like being transplanted very much. But in actual fact, um, 
that doesn't work for me out here because I've got too many rodents and so I actually pre-sprout my squash as well so long as you don't mess about with their taproot and um, it's that that's the issue you can transplant them just you know don't get them don't let them get pot bound and don't don't fluff out their roots just get them in the ground don't mess about with them I hope you've enjoyed this I hope you'll like subscribe and share and I hope to see you here next time bye for now